Now, if you're a seasoned investor, this is probably not going to be the video for you. If you know about stocks, if you know about passive income, if you know about making money while you're asleep, if you know about all of those things, then you don't need to be here. You won't learn anything new out of this. But what you can do is leave a comment below and give advice to anyone that is watching this because they're just getting started. Meanwhile, if you're a millennial or a Gen Z that is brand new to all this and is just getting started, you need to watch this because I want to show you something. Look guys, I spent a good chunk of my quarantine trying to find out how I can profit from this whole coronavirus situation because I strongly believe in making the most out of a situation. A couple of months have gone by since I put the initial amount of money down and I wanted to share with you what that process was, what I used, how I did it, and most importantly, the results. Now the quick backstory is it's not like I just went into this and thought this is a recession, I need to get invested. That's not at all what happened. I wish it was, I wish I was that guy but it's not. What really happened was that in April sometime, I got an email from my bank saying that my savings account interest rate would drop from 1.14% to 0.35% on the 1st of May. So I decided to close that account and take my money back. The first thing that they tell you when it comes to savings and investing is do not put all of your eggs in one basket. Honestly, this is not a mistake that I needed to make to understand it. If you put all of your savings and invest them into one stock, and that one stock goes crashing down, you kind of call that upon yourself. So splitting my money up, what does that mean? That means that I wanted to allocate some of it to go back into my savings and have it ready to pull out whenever I needed it, and some of it to be invested. Right, let's start with savings. I use an online banking service called Monzo. They operate both in the UK and in the US at the moment. There are very similar options for different countries in Europe as well. But if you are in the US or the UK, you can use my Monzo code, which will be linked in the description. And if you do sign up to Monzo, we will both get five pounds or $5 equivalent credit. I just wanted to put that out there for full disclosure. So what is Monzo? Monzo is an online bank account that allows you to split money into pots. And this is why I've been using it for years because I love this feature. But when you transfer money into your Monzo account, it goes into the primary account. And that is what I personally use to set myself a weekly allowance. What you also can do is from that primary account set up a secondary account on your Monzo which is called a pot. So the great thing about this for me is that when you put money into these pots if you go to withdraw money or if you go to spend money Monzo will not take the money from your pots. That to be spent needs to be transferred right back into your primary account and that is a godsend. The transferring is instant though. There's no waiting times, nothing like that, which means that in case of a rainy day, it's instant. Anyway, this is my emergency money. The money that I have set aside that I don't want to touch, that I don't want to invest, that I don't want to put into a savings account because I need access to it immediately if something were to happen. Obviously, the consequence to that is that I don't gain anything on it. I don't make interest and it actually loses value with inflation. And this is where the investing part comes in. Now I'm going to be giving you a couple of options here. So whether you have one pound, a hundred pounds, a thousand pounds, 10,000 pounds, there will be an option for you to be able to invest your money. Now, because I'm not an investor, like that's no secret. I am not an investor. I did not want to make the mistake of putting in the other half of my savings, investing into things that I don't understand and then losing all of my money because there is a risk attached to investing. And if you don't know what you're doing, you're just throwing money out the window. For this reason, the majority of the money that I allocated to investing, I handed it over to an online investment advisor called Money Farm. Now, Money Farm is an Italian company that currently operates in Italy and the UK, which is perfect for me as an Italian living in the United Kingdom. Basically, the way Money Farm works is you create a profile, an account, and you select your risk level. My current risk level is five out of seven, which is leaning towards the higher side. And I'll explain that in a second. Once that's done, you then deposit the money in there there and that's it. You watch it grow. Now, just a quick note on risk levels. The idea of a lower risk level is that your money is less in danger of crashing with the market. So realistically, the gains on the money are more likely to be lower than if you select a higher risk level, but the losses are also going to be less drastic most of the time if you select a lower risk level. In contrast with a higher risk level account, the gains are more likely to be much higher, but the losses if there's a market crash are more likely to be much higher as well. Through my very limited research, what I tend to find is that if you are a younger investor and you're able to keep your money invested for multiple years, over the long term, over the course of five, 10, 15, 20 years ideally, you're going to see a positive rise. So for me personally, I used coronavirus and COVID-19 as an opportunity to 
to make a profit. When the market was down, as you can see, I made my first investment on April 6th, 2020. I put down 1,000 pounds, and this was already quite advanced into the pandemic. It was quite late on, but the market was still pretty far down here. And since then, you'll see that I actually added an extra 150 pounds. I'm planning to do this on a monthly basis, and the growth has been pretty much in line with the global economy. Right now, we're up by about 13%. Now remember, none of this, and, and, and I mean it, none of this, this investing thing is about instant gratification. If I want my portfolio's value to rise significantly, I need to be putting money in monthly, which I'm planning to do, but also I need to be sure I will stay invested for a good amount of time, for a few years. If you wanna know more about Money Farm, I, I, I can dedicate a video on it in the future, but in the meantime, I'll leave a link down in the description for you to sign up to it. And if you use that, your money will be managed for free for a year up to the value of 5,000 pounds. Money Farm obviously does have its fees. I used somebody's code to sign up, so I'm not paying for the first year, but obviously please do read more on their fees on their website because that's important to stay informed on that. Now, if you're not in Italy or the UK, because those are countries that Money Farm currently operates in, there are very, very, very similar options to this for the US and Canada and other countries as well. The one that I'm somewhat familiar with that came up in my research is called Wealth Simple. It appears to me that it works pretty much in the exact same way as Money Farm does, but again, I would do my research if I were you, if you're looking to invest in that. So by this point, I think you found out, like, I love the world of investing. It interests me. I love seeing my money grow. I mean, who doesn't or who wouldn't? So I decided to assign a very, very, very small portion of my money uh, to something a little bit different as well. I basically put aside 100 pounds, just 100 pounds to play around with. And with such a small amount of money, I needed something that was free that would allow me to play around with shares. And that means that it would allow me to invest in fractional shares. And fractional shares, what that means is that basically if you want to invest in a Google share, the price of a single Google share is almost at 1.5 thousand US dollars. So there are some apps and websites out there that allow you to buy fractional shares. So they allow you to buy a very small part of a share. So with fractional shares, you can still put your money in that company, but you have full control on how much you're putting into it. So looking into this, I actually found an app called Trading212. The app itself is completely free to use and they have this really handy thing where before you actually put money into it, they have a fake account thing. So they give you like a pseudo $50,000 and they let you invest it into the shares that you like. So they show you how your money would fluctuate if you had actually invested that money into those uh, shares, which is actually really handy in my opinion. I played around with that option for the first couple days. I actually was making a loss because again, I was playing around with it when it was a whole middle of the COVID situation and the market was still dropping a little bit. Uh, so I started putting money in and, and I spent the $50,000 way faster than I would have liked. But then I was like, you know what, screw it. I wanna try with my 100 pounds. It's an amount of money that I don't care if I lose. So I put my money down. Honestly, I was so excited to start with this. I managed to spend these 100 pounds in like 20 minutes. Now with my trading 212 portfolio, so far so good actually. What I did again was I followed the first principle of do not put all your eggs in one basket. So I split my 100 pounds and I said I'm not going to be spending more than five pounds worth of money on every share that I buy. And this is where the fractional shares were key. I tended to lean more into the aviation shares for some reason. I don't know. I, I, I felt like the airline industry was very, very, very low at that time. And there were some airlines that I know and trust that I'm like, I feel like they're going to come back up. They're going to make a comeback and they're going to go back to their original value, if not more than that. So I trusted my decision and I said, I, I want to go and invest in these. And here we're talking about the likes of uh, EasyJet, Ryanair, Lufthansa, IAG, obviously, and even Airbus, for example. I thought that that was a good choice. And so far, some of these are the ones that have actually made me the most added value on my portfolio. Now, when Warren Buffett announced that he was selling all of his airline stocks, I was a bit like, red flag over here, but I don't know, so far so good. So I've got my fingers crossed. And again, it's a test. It's a hundred pounds. I'm not trying to make money off of this. I'm just seeing how things go. Now, as of today, the value of my portfolio has actually grown by 27%, way higher than my money farm. And that's probably because like the risk value of this portfolio would be a lot higher than what my money farm was. Obviously I don't put this down to any skill of mine. It's, it's purely 
um, making profit out of the coronavirus situation, the fact that the whole market was down, and finding companies whose market value was so low because of the situation and are now kind of creeping back up. Now, similarly to the other things mentioned in this video, I also have a link to Trading212 that you can use to sign up. And the good thing about Trading212 is that they are available in so many countries. And if you use my link, you and I both get one free share up to the value of 100 pounds. This is a really generous giveaway and I think that they're simply doing this because they're still in the stages of growing as a company with users. So if you're looking into this, it's something that I would look into doing quite quickly because it might not be around the whole time. You can start with as little as one pound on there and split that up and put that into different shares and watch it grow or watch it not grow. Um, and I honestly think it's such an awesome way to familiarize yourself with this world if it's something that you're interested in going into later down the line. Now, the main advice I can give you in all of this is to not use money that you don't have. Please do not use money you don't have. Start looking into trading and investing only if you already have a sum available that you know that you're not gonna be touching in the near future, that you're not gonna be needing. You should have your income, you should have what you have to survive on, you should have savings that you can dip into at any point, so like an emergency fund, and then any money left over from that that is what you can start putting into investing and trading. Obviously, I'm still learning as well, so if you have any tips for me or my viewers, please leave them in the comments below. They are more than welcome because we're all learning here. If I make any mistakes at all, do check the comments because I will correct myself. Meanwhile, follow me on social media. I'm on Twitter and Instagram. Leave me a like and a comment below and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. My name's Silco Films. And thank you so much for watching this video. And again, I apologize for my allergies. I'll see you next week. Ciao.